Hi everybody, this is John Hardy with you once again on The John Hardy Show. We've got a great opportunity for you and I to do some work together. I've got two guests and we have uh, quite different dynamics and uh, I'd like to introduce straight away to you Peter Treneman, who you've seen before. Peter, welcome back into the studio. Good morning, John. How are you? I'm really well. And yourself? Yeah, not too bad. In the wind-up for uh, Christmas. Yes. Um, it's um, it's a bit of a, a mix and match. You know, there's a lot of things going on at home and business is starting to sort of uh, clean up the things that have been going on through the year yeah. and people are preparing for their own break. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. Uh, so, um, everybody around the world, we're recording in December. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's okay. And um, uh, yeah, we are looking forward to Christmas. Absolutely. It's a great time of the year, Absolutely. great celebration, great family time and many other great That's things it. in That's that. Pete, Peter, give us a recap on your business because then I want to ask you a couple of very specific areas sure. to help um, our viewing audience today. Sure, okay. Um, well, Group Support is uh, 12 years old as of the uh, as of January, we'll be 13. Um, we have eight staff in Belmont. We run and support um, clients uh, around Australia, um, a couple across the world, but let's just focus on yeah. Australia. Um, we do business software and IT solutions. Uh, we help with the networking, with uh, the actual physical computing and the, the networks, and we also help with applications, security, all the things that make business run because our ideal is to make the platform on which you run the basis for your business so that you're not distracted. So tell us a solution you brought to a business just recently to help um, people understand how you do it. Right, okay. Um, so we have a, a client who has three offices. Um, all three were going over to NBN from ADSL. Um, so we managed their backup services, for instance. Uh, previously, they were handballing uh, USB hard drives um, and they were going in the receptionist bag and going backwards and forwards um, because the, the connection speeds were so poor in yeah. some of the other locations. Um, so what we've ended up doing is putting in a remote backup solution from one site to another. They've got multiple sites, so why not use that? Yeah. Um, connecting up to NBN, which means they can also go to a, a centralised telephone system um, with only six staff, they can afford a virtual PBX, which means that they can now switch phones backwards and forwards between the three sites seamlessly yep. at a fraction of the cost. Yep. We've reduced their telephone bill by a third, um, increased their security by centralising their backups and making them all um, automated so that um, it's not dependent upon the human. <laughs> which is <laughs> that's helpful. Yeah, don't, don't get me wrong, humans <laughs> are very important and all that sort of stuff, but that's um, and then made sure the security is all good, yes. Okay, so yeah. um, and that's that's the backbone of, of what we do so that we're focusing on getting their business running so that they can focus on that rather than on the stuff behind. So, in Australia, we're changing some technology, so yes. just explain a lot of technology. that and um, ADSL and MBN language to help people understand because we have listeners all over the world, what that technology changes. Sure. Um, we are changing from an analogue system with uh, copper pairs um, running ADSL, for an asynchronous dial-up. Um, dial <laughs> <laughs> for those people who want to Google ADSL, um, uh, through to NBN, which is uh, fibre-backed um, uh, services either to a node, um, which is a, a community node within three or 500 metres of a premise, uh, whether that be home or business, uh, to the curb or actually to the premise. Yeah. Um, and so essentially we're increasing the speed of transport by between 10 and 100 times. Um, we're increasing the effectiveness. Um, the number of providers is expanding threefold. So we've gone from um, reducing the number of providers over the last sort of 10 or 15 years down to sort of uh, half a dozen big players and, and, a, and a scattering of smaller players to now there's 50 players wow. in the NBN space wow. um, who can provide you anything from uh, $50 a month um, standalone you know, data uh, that's got caps, a yep. download cap on it, um, through to unlimited NBN uh, with a telephone service, TV services, and all the other bits and pieces that go through with that. So, yeah. huge change in in the mental appreciation and the conceptual 
appropriateness of different technologies in different locations. Yep. Streaming TV. Yes. Uh, voice over internet protocol, yes. so VoIP telephones, yes. um, uh, remote things, you know, um, yeah, streaming, the, streaming the show yep. now becomes much more possible. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you can put bigger files down. Yes. yes. Um, you can also retrieve information while someone's downloading the, the, the movie. You can retrieve information about their location from where they are because the connections are good. Now, previously, that wasn't always possible yeah. because your, your backhaul was very slow. Um, I'm not sure how many people um, in other locations actually understand that um, ADSL is, is a huge download speed and you sacrifice the upload speed because the average home doesn't want to push much back up That's to the internet. Yes. Um, and so typically you have less than one meg of bandwidth available to, um, to upload. Um, so NBN forgoes a lot of those things. So changing of security, changing of routers, uh, modems, changing of um, you know the internet of things. Um, yes, so you that's right. your, yes. your fridge and your TV and your radio and, and your telephone all on the internet. But you also have to have the appropriate security on all that. And that's, that's what we're going yeah. to see. <laughs> see what I do? <laughs> that's right. Because that's why I wanted to get you back in the room. Kind of, it's the end of the year. Cyber security is a challenge for business. Yes, and definitely all of us. So tell us a little bit more about cyber security for us, and maybe um, where do you want me to start? You know, keep it fairly understandable for non-nerds. Right. Okay. Okay. The concept of cyber security with increased speeds. Um, is a bit like changing your old single front door, you know, okay. you know on, yes. on your house you have a front door. Yes. One door, it just opens and closes, and it's, and in Australia we've got a flyby door, and some other places yep. don't have a flyby door. Um, imagine changing that to a double door. Yeah. Okay. And then every other place where there's an exit or entrance to the house, changing that to a double door as well, which means you open a door, open one side, but both sides can open at any point in time. So the number of things that can come in yes. is increased. And it's not just increased double. Yes. You know, um, we are facing more and more people who are opting to live a lifestyle of, um, well, it's the black market. Yep. It's stealing. It's yes. extortion. It's blackmail. Um, it's theft. Scam. Um, well, scam is, is theft, yeah, extortion, all that stuff, yeah. Blackmail, yeah. You know. so, so there's a whole lot of people who are seeing um, that as a, a valid choice for their lifestyle. Yep. And there's an increasing number of people. And it's not only, um, you know, the Russians and the Chinese type of thing. <laughs> yes. um, there's uh, large hubs in other European cities, other, other um, you know, in North America, South America, even Australia, Africa, wherever there are people who are of the mentality where that's a valid way of actually getting income with the least So effort. businesses need to be aware, cyber security. And, and people, and yes. normal people. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say to everybody, can't blanch, and I don't care what the, yep. what the banking people say, but if you use a banking app on your phone, <laughs> okay, yes. don't. Delete yes. it, turn it off, because the only thing that's in between you, okay, or a would-be hacker, yes. and your bank, Okay, all your funds, all that sort of stuff is your PIN number on your phone. Yep. Okay. Now, if you've got a four digit PIN, there's yes. 9,000 combinations. You've heard me say yes. this before, there's 9,000 combinations. The average computer um, takes less time to crack that combination than it does for me to explain it to you. Wow. Okay, so by the time I finish yes. explaining, it's done. Yes. Okay. Allow a bit of time to actually interrogate the phone repeatedly. But you're still talking a very short space of time, um, and it's very quick, and it can just be repeated by a robot, by a machine that's programmed that way, again and again and again, a million times a day. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's help businesses okay. specifically so let, with cyber security. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, the average business needs to communicate, yep. and it needs to get information in and out. Yes. When you're, getting, when you're sending information out, you need to make sure that the person who's receiving it is the right person, okay? And that's, that's the essential part of the human part of, of 
getting the address right and, and those sort of things, making sure that your invoices are going to the right yeah. places and all that sort of thing. That's the human part of the security aspect. On the electronic side, on the network side, um, when you're sending it out, can someone snaffle that? Can mm. come and tag something to that as it goes out to follow where it goes? Wow. Okay. Or as you're standing in your business, can someone get in? Because you need to receive information yes. and you receive information through the web, through your telephone, through um, emails, all those things. And so those things are, in, in technical talk, we call them ports. Yeah. Okay. So are the ports open? Which ports are open? Are they obscured? Can people only go through those ports if they're previously logged in, if they're authenticated? And you know things like SSL certificates. Do you know what SSL? You, you've seen the little padlock yeah, on a bank yeah, and, yes. and, and other sites. SSL certificates are a perfect way of making sure that the destination and and yourself are talking in a secure transport mm. um, packet. Yeah. Um, which means that people can't interrupt that that stream of information backwards and forwards. So information goes out, needs to be secured and be tagged. That's information it. coming in, is it percentage difficulty higher coming or going out? What's the... It, it's harder to secure information going out. Yep. Um, it's easier to block what's coming in. Yep. But you can't block it too much. Yeah. You know, yeah, yes. we all need to breathe and, and, and those sort of things. So blocking our mouth so that we don't breathe in all the gunk means we're also blocking air. Yes. <laughs> so there's a fine line to do that. Um, and there's a whole lot of technology available, very smart technology, um, that it needs to be specifically targeted and tailored to a business. Um, and typically, um, we have one brand, um, am I allowed to say brands and things like oh, that? Yeah. yeah. One of the brands we use a lot is Fortinet. Okay. okay. Fortinet is a, um, a... Do you want to spell that? F-O-R-T-I-N-E-T. -E okay. Fortinet. Yep. And they use a variety of, of, of devices. Uh, FortiGate is one of their routers. Now, typically, um, the average router you can buy from your corner shop to, to yes. you know, is, is a couple of hundred, you know, between a hundred and two hundred, three hundred dollars. You know? yep. And you might buy a whiz bang one, yep. and it's six hundred dollars. A FortiNet starts at fifteen hundred. Yep. But the difference that what you get is so much better, yep. so much cleaner, so much easier. To work with and that's security. that's the doors coming in yes, to the business right, isn't it right. so if you get that right that's it that's a, a really important thing to be doing that's to it. start and the difference yes. is the difference is we had a hacking attempt on, yep. a, on a client um, they are um, a small but very effective um, business with some very valuable intellectual pro property um, and their IP is protected in a mm. variety of ways. Mm. We know it's a hacker getting into on one of the machines because one of the ports on one of the programs had been left open. Okay. We, through the Fortinet, we actually contained that person, that hacker, to that one machine wow. until <clears> we could actually sever the connection and clear the line. Mm. Okay? Wow. We have another set of um, what's called SIP bombing, which is... Um, people trying to hack into a telephone system, okay? Yep. By pretending they're another telephone system company. Yes. If you understand yes. what I'm saying. I understand, saying. yes. Um, so just to, to recap, in, in internet telephone land, um, your internet telephone has to register with an exchange. Yes. Uh, an exchange of sorts, yep. so that other people know where you are. So in by registering your handset to this cloud, this thing in the cloud, um, you are then telling someone where your handset is so that when they call John, yep. the call routes to that exchange and then that exchange fires the phone, the call to your phone. It's not just a free for all. Yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's sort of regulated. So um, the idea being that if uh, someone pretends, and the word is spoof, okay, yes. if someone spoofs an IP address which is not theirs, which is a valid IP, mm -hmm. Um, if someone pretends to be someone else, impersonates an, IP, an exchange and says, oh, you can talk to me instead, and the telephone system is dumb. They don't mm, understand. Yep. But Fortinet picked it up and mm. said, hey, guys, there's something going on. We've had, we've had an exchange come in and try and interfere. Now, exchanges don't do that. Mm. Exchanges are yes. passive. Yes. So when exchange, an exchange is apparently aggressively attacking, there's something wrong. 
So we've got that. What happens next to help with cyber security? Okay, so the next part of it is putting something like an antivirus in place, okay. um, putting some um, security permissions um, on the network and the shares. Um, some things you need to look at. Let's let's talk about antivirus and those yeah, sort of yeah, problems. Yeah, that's important. There's, there's a lot of antivirus. Oh yes, yes. and I, my, I say to people, pay for them. Yes. Don't get the free ones. Yes. Okay, the free ones are slower. The free mm -hmm. ones aren't updated as promptly. Mm -hmm. Okay, the free ones don't have help and support. So your IT person can't go and say, uh, "What's this?" Mm -hmm. and get a response. Um, we were one of the first in the in in the world to pick up the. Black Friday mm -hmm. um, scam, uh, banking scam. Okay, we reported it back to Kaspersky because um, that's who that's one of our major partners. Um, reported back to Kaspersky, they produced a patch within an hour. Wow. Now that sort of response yes. is what you yeah. pay for. So, do you help with that other term you used about security something? You mentioned so. fabric security fabric yes yes okay. so the security fabric is is the the entire plan okay it's it's you, you do business plans yes, and, I and do. you look at the forward projections yes. and, and how you're actually performing and what you're actually doing yes. well the security fabric is no different okay but you're looking at the traffic on the, the network and are you logging on to this banking app or are you doing that with your data how are you working in the network and this is what an IT consultant, this is part of what group support do. Yes. On a daily basis, yes. we actually come into businesses, talk with people, and work out the best solution. Um, whether that be a semi-mobile solution, um, and you are semi-mobile, yes. so yes. you need access on your phone, and, and some of your applications are mobile, and some of them are sitting at home with your system at home. Yes, that's okay. right. So you're in and out of the office. So the same for all the people who run businesses, where do they fit? What do they need? Do they need their sales guys to be out on the road? And do they need access to information? What access do they need? Can they get access? So in some situations, we'd say, okay, right, while you're out of the office, you can't get access to the financials. You yes. can get access to the customer list, but not the financials. While you're inside the office, you can get access to the financials. Yep. Okay. Yep. And in that way, what we're doing is using natural barriers and natural security to try and overcome some of those fudges that happen yep. out on the road and out in the wild. So imagine um, the IT landscape is, is, is full of pirates and um, it's <laughs> wild west. It, it really is um, kill or be killed type of yep. environment. It's, it's very hard um, to actually convey to people it's not just you know fridges ordering your, your food um, because someone can come in and hack your fridge and order you um, you know, two tons of meat. Okay. Yep. Ab that's absurd. I yeah. Mean, and and I'm using an extreme example, but if they log on to your website, your shopping website, you've got your credit card saved on there. They order you two tons of meat. How are you going to prove it wasn't you? Mm. And, and that's a very small example. Yes, but, yes, but, absolutely. You know, we can get the other end where yep. they can wipe your business out, just encrypt the whole lot, and then say well, it cost you a million dollars. So we talked about the importance and the dynamics of yes. Tell us a little bit more the dangers of not. Okay, first of all, the biggest danger is not backing up. Mm, okay. Yes. Um, we previously, and I, we previously, you and I spoke about a situation where a client was um, crypto locked, okay, and we got their entire image from yesterday, brought it to site, rolled it all back, okay. They were down for about a day and a half, two days. Okay? And they can keep going. Yes. Business interruption, yes, there was some. Yep. Business impact, minimal. Mm. Uh, the salespeople were able to keep going out. They were still able to sell things through the out, out to the clients. Okay? The finance things and all the, the management and control things behind the scenes, okay, yes, they had to start suffer and struggle a little bit, but the then Overall, at the end of the month. Mm. So, have you had companies come to you that have lost their backup? Oh yes. Oh, yes. What's happened? Oh, <laughs> you name it. There's been uh, discs fail. Yes. Um, if you ever, if you and and yeah. you, you must see a lot of people yeah. who have a USB drive and yes. they back it up and they then put it in their handbag yes. or it sits on the shelf at home. 
Um, and then little Johnny comes and knocks it off. Or they're in, they, uh, they're, it's in their handbag and they forget. And they're sort of rushing through a supermarket and it gets bashed against the trolley and all the other bits and pieces. Now, all those things are degrading the integrity of the disk in the yes. USB yes. enclosure, which means that your chances of actually having a good recovery is less. Backing up to the cloud, quite often people don't configure or pay enough, so you only have a copy up there. Mm. So the moment you write over it, you've lost any rec recurrence. Mm. Yes. So you haven't written it. Historical dark. Yes. That's it. Yes. Um, Apple have a very good one called Time Machine. Yes, Okay, that's what I use. Um, however, that doesn't work if you're in the network and you're using Windows. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in the network and I don't use Windows. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. so most of the business applications, predominantly the business, business applications mm. around the world, um, use Windows yep. um, because it's a native networker. Yep. Um, it provides most effective um, groupware, is what they call it. That's, that's the name yep. of that range of softwares that enable a team of people to work together. Um, although that's coming, that's uh, improving, but um, backups are, by and large, that is the thing you need to do. Yeah. When things go wrong, I've had a client who had to start again. Wow. Yeah. They had some paper records and they employed a couple of people to just type all the customer data in. They got their financial records from last year from their accountant Okay, which were basically Excel spreadsheets and keyed it all back in. Yeah. And they started keying back in emails and, and yeah. stuff like that that they could actually find. For the most part, um, they only came back to about 50% of their um, historical mm -hmm. value yeah. um, within the first sort of two months. So how do we help businesses put a strategy that they can implement, you know, in a sense, this is the end of the year, and oftentimes people are thinking, where can I go? What should I do? And cybersecurity is all the time on the news, and we get frightened by it. And I want to help my businesses that are listening to yes. the show. Yes. So let's let's work out how okay. we can help them. So, so first and foremost, I'm not interfering. With you. Now you know me, and yes. you know me long enough, yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I don't want to come across with a doom and gloom. Yeah. Okay. There's a bright shiny world out there. Yeah. Um, with a decent set of um, uh, protection mechanisms in place. Yeah. You can do wonderful things. Yes. And that's my, my yeah. That's, that's what my, we wanted. That's my yeah, correct. Yeah. So first and foremost, if you have um, a consultant or someone who says it's all doom and gloom and it's going to cost you a million dollars, move away. Yeah. Change. Look for someone else. Yes. Okay. It will never be free. Yeah. Correct. Okay? Pay for the advice. Yes. Okay. So first, first thing, get some good advice and pay for it. Yeah. Trust the person you are getting your advice from. Uh, the second thing is that. Have a plan in place. Ask them to explain. Now, you know me yep. once again. Yes. I, 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 I live what I... Yeah, what you I, do. What, yeah. I, um, what's the what, you, what you practice. That's yeah, it. That's it. Or practice, practice what, what you preach. preach. That's yeah. it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I explain things yep. day in, day out. It's all I do, all yep. day. Okay. And so I explain how these things work together and lots of stuff. Now, find someone who works with you okay, and can understand what you want and you can understand what they're telling you. Yes. Now, you are not an IT person. I'm oh, not at all. No. no. But you understand what I'm Oh, I, I get it, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and when I say, no, don't do that, John, do yeah. this. So I need I need a good router. That's it. I need good antivirus. Yes. I need a good consultant to have a look at my system to tell me what change, I'm actually change doing. The, change the order of those. Ah, OK. OK, get someone in there first. Right. OK. Because the same router doesn't yes. fit all. Okay. Yes. So get a, a good person. Yes. Then get the equipment. Yes. Then get the appropriate router. Yep. Some antivirus security. Yep. But most of all, a good backup. Right. And so businesses do that. What difference will that help them? Peace of mind going forward. What's going to okay. What's going to change? Um, uh, one of my clients is uh, they had eight staff, uh, and they were struggling a little little bit with what was going on. They decided to change their business and they wanted to de-stress, okay? Paid some money, it cost them two and a half thousand dollars, okay? Um, and they paid that up front to actually get it running. Um, we changed their router, put their more secure router in, we gave them NBN, um, we changed all their technology uh, as far as the telephones. We changed their backup to be an off-site backup which is automated, 
okay, and put antivirus on anything that moved and anything that didn't. Yes. You know, um, their change in stress yeah. was the biggest single difference. He then could go home at night, spend time with his family, and more often than not, on Sunday night, I'd get this A4 page of ideas. Oh, we could do this with the business. We could do this. How would that impact what was going on? He'd started thinking. Yes. yes. And stress is a great debilitator. Yep. It is. Okay, on a whole <clears throat> range of things. Mm. And I've been there myself. And so, you know, I, I, I can tell you horror stories. Um, not, not today. Not today. Not, not, not today. Right? It's almost um, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the idea is that what are you doing yeah. to de-stress your life so that you can focus on actually moving forward with your business and, and using the talents and the gifts yeah. that you naturally have, yes. that you are helping people with, yes. without giving them that burden. Yep. Okay. And you find that people are then free to talk stuff through. And once you've got a team of people around you who can talk about all this sort of stuff, they can say, well, do that rather than that, do that rather than that. They're not going to say no. They're going to help you because if you succeed, I succeed. Correct. So we give them a good idea about cybersecurity, what it is. Yeah. We give them a strategy. That's it. Let's illustrate to closing with the strangest machine you found to actually make sure had protection on it. An automated plasma cover. There you go. Okay, so it's a, uh, a, it's a robot, it's yep. a full, fully automated. Um, you put a, 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 an inch thick piece of steel in a bath, in a pool, okay, that's 30 metres long, okay, and 10 metres wide, okay. It's laser guided, fully suspended above the pool, okay, and it cuts the metal in the water, mm. okay, to a pattern. Yes. That you then load up from a design program that's sitting on the desktop. Yes. So it's part of a big long line of things to do with manufacturing. Yes. But this machine um, ran this, uh, let's say, a nobbled operating system. Mm. It wasn't a normal operating system, um, but it was exposed to the internet. Yes. And it was at risk. Yes. It, was, it wasn't a risk of being infected itself but it was a risk of being the transport yes. into the bigger system because it was fully connected. And that's what I wanted people to realise is there is lots of machines that's it. in our world and we need everyone looked at and being part, part of our total cyber security. The, the, the most common thing that yes. people forget, okay. they're PV. Wow. Are you joking? No. no most, if you ring up LG and say my TV's um, on the fritz and, and needs thing. The technician will say, what's the serial number? I'll get on it. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> that's... Uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> they, can, they can remote onto the TV. Wow. And, and download a new set of firmware. Okay, for most people, because they don't cut those ports off. They don't protect themselves wow. natively. Now, if someone who's valid can do it, mm. okay, at the, at the touch of a button, yes. because you called them. Yeah. So businesses have good security, our homes need to have good security. Well, you, you yes. are the, the director of your yes, business. that's right. So why can't someone load a Trojan on your machine yes. as you go to work yes. and you, as the boss, you've got full permissions a whole lot of things. So they've just gone, yes. kablam. And that's what we want to do, that's to it. help people realise the potential. You do it right, it will protect your lifestyle, will protect your business and give you peace of mind oh, and security absolutely. and you'll be more effective. Absolutely. And that's what we want to do in business, don't we? Absolutely. Yep. Peter, it's been really <laughs> great to have you in the studio Thank once you. again. Uh, folks, uh, Peter's a great guy. Tell us again the name of your business and how to get in contact with you. So uh, Group Support, um, www.groupsupport.com.au. Um, we're available uh, through support at groupsupport.com.au is our primary support email address. Um, Google us for the phone numbers, uh, ways to drive there, all those sort of things. Yeah, great. Uh, my name's Peter Treneman. I'm the director. I'm available on LinkedIn and Facebook and um, not all the socials. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a great guy, works across Australia. And if you're anywhere in the world, I'm sure Peter will be able to help you if you have a question. Thank you so much for listening to us once again. Thank you so much for being in Thanks the studio. Done. And remember, we're wanting to do this to help you do business better. Mm -hmm.